I'm Michael Cox, the, the director of the O'Neill Center, and um, I'm next on your agenda today, so let me get started with that. My presentation is titled, Looking for the New, New World. The migration to uh, the Americas began long ago, 300 more cent years ago, uh, as people looking for liberty, freedom, opportunity, chance to make a better life for themselves, put their, themselves and their families at risk crossing the ocean to come to the, the New World. That continued right on through the formation of the early 13 states, the colonies, and the th eventually 13 states and more. Look at the shape of Texas here uh, and even Arkansas. This is a map that was published in Philadelphia in 19, 1822. And it continued uh, even further <clears throat> with the quest westward for freedom, the yearning to, uh, for, of self-determination that people, I think, have and uh, continued through arrival of immigrants to Ellis Island uh, to be incorporated into the American economy. Um, and it's symbolized today, of course, still by the Statue of Liberty um, that uh, we, 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 I think, we, we love. But yet, the questions or comments I hear most often today are, is America past the tipping point? And if you don't know what I mean by that, go read Alexander Fraser Titler's um, material from on the rise and fall of nations. Um, also, the next comment I hear is the following. The next election may be the most important one in our lifetime. And then finally, to where should I move? <laughs> You're laughing. Uh, and if, when I hear that question, I say to people, are you prepared to pay the exit tax? And they say, what? And I say, yes, go read about the exit tax. If you decide to leave America now, they're going to get you. Uh, they're going to tax forward all of your capital gains on your property, have a 30% uh, withholding tax, and a whole lot more things. Go read about it. It's pretty easy to find. It's, it's real. Yet some people are willing to pay the tax, and there's a growing trend of, of folks leaving America uh, to settle in places. And you can, you should, if you're interested in this, go get Escape from America magazine, which has about 400,000 subscribers. 50,000 Americans settle, resettle in Costa Rica, 100,000 in Mexico, and so on. Estimates are between 1.5 and, and 2 million Americans have left looking for something. I think they're looking for economic freedom. And uh, Adam Smith explained what this was in his book, The Wealth of Nations, published in 1776. This is when the concept of economic freedom was really born theoretically. But, of course, people knew it, what it was long before that. My question is this, does economic freedom, freedom still matter to people? Self-determination, a great word. The ability to gain from making good choices and the willingness to accept the punishment from making bad ones. Is that something that people still crave? I showed you this you know, thing about people leaving America. Um, the yearning for economic freedom represented by this phenomena, is that something found just in a handful of radicals, or are most Americans looking for the new, new world? Well, I think I can answer that question for you and prove that it's the latter, not the former. It's the ex rule, not the exception, using migration patterns across America, which is what I want to show you here today, a state-by-state -state analysis. I was giving a presentation to Energy Future Holdings when the chairman, John Young, said to me, 200, Mike, did you know that 200 people move from California to Texas every day. And I thought, how does he know that? I promised I'd find out if it were true or not. It's, it's roughly correct. And I went and found the data at the IRS for migration patterns across America, state to state inflow of people, state to state outflow of people over these four years. And you could even get it down to the county level, what county people are moving to from. So let's look at what that data shows. This is the n total number of people who have moved from to Texas, number one on the list, Florida and North Carolina, so on, over the 2004-08 period. The blue line represents the number of people who moved inside America from one state to, to Texas, from states to Texas. The red is the foreign uh, folks moving from abroad, and the black line is the total. <clears throat> what state in America gets the most people annually? Texas. Who's second? 
Florida, then North Carolina, and Georgia. These are the top 15 states gaining people in America in, in, in absolute value. Who are the net losers? California, New York, Michigan, New Jersey, Illinois, and so on. Louisiana, you should really throw that out because that's during this period it was Katrina. But the black line here again is the, is the net Im immigration with E out of California to the rest of the United States, to anywhere, and um, the blue would be the domestic citizens who left, and the, and the, but there are, of course, immigration uh, coming into California from abroad. So uh, California is losing a lot, New York and so on, Texas is gaining a lot. Where do the folks who come to Texas come from? Number one state, California. Number two, again, that's Katrina. We resettled that population, Louisiana, but then foreign, FR is foreign coming from abroad and then coming from Florida, Illinois, and so on. But number one, California on this list. And here's the top 15, oh, there's only three states to which people move when they leave. Texas. Eight people left Texas for Colorado. <laughs> 37 went to Wyoming, and then Bush took some people up to D.C. with him. <laughs> so you're in the right place. People don't want to leave Texas. On a daily basis, roughly 190 peop people move to Texas from California, and about 90 people lose their minds and go the other direction. For a net of 100 people who move um, to Texas every day from California. And you can see the numbers elsewhere, too. Uh, of course, Texas is a big state, so maybe we should look at this in percentage terms, which is what this graph enables us to do. This graph uh, enables us to look on this axis the outflow of people from a state. On this axis, the inflow. You want to be on this upper quadrant here where the inflow exceeds the outflow, like Texas. So we have, if you look at this vertical distance, that's the net inflow. It's the largest vertical distance, so we do gain the most people, but we don't gain the most in percentage terms. North Carolina and Georgia and Arizona gain a few more people in percentage terms. Uh, New York uh, loses the most people in percentage terms, and Michigan, California, the most in absolute value, if you're interested in looking at it that way. And when people move, their income moves, and the state gaining the most income is Florida. Texas is second. This is people retiring to Florida who might have earned a lot of income the, you know, the year before they moved, but since they're retiring, really that's not that much money going to Florida. Not much income. It might be wealth, but it's not income flows. They're not going to move there and start a new job. So probably Texas comes out on the top of this too. Uh, and look at the amount of money that California is losing every year in New York. $19 billion flowing out of New York annually in terms of the income of the people who are leaving, about 17 for California. That's a huge loss in the tax base, which is a huge loss in taxes, which of course is also therefore uh, a need for the state, if it doesn't start thinking right, to need to raise taxes on the remaining people uh, to continue to uh, pay all the bills and, and um, whatever else is going on in the states. You can't, you can't help but believe that there's something more than just paying bills that's going on when you're spending that much money. And, and so it's an unstable equilibrium. Te Texas is on the good side of this, New York and California on the bad. So why do people move? I've looked um, at this. There was, I was trying to figure out what people have said about this by going back to what the government has said about it. What does the government say the census studies show about why people move? Well, they asked folks questions. They just did a survey. Hey, why did you move? And they basically found, uh, with their, their questions weren't, I don't think, very thorough. They tended to fall in two categories, non-economic reasons, which I've kind of got here in blue, uh, and economic reasons. The non-economic non reasons, or I'm retired, I just want to move to a different location. I got married and needed to move to be with my spouse. Uh, health, climate, uh, go to school, whatever. And then there are the economic reasons, oh, less crime. And then there are the economic reasons, um, I, need, I need a job. I want higher income. I want uh, to own a home and I can't afford it or just pay less for my housing. These are, there are more reasons than this, and I'm sitting down thinking about it and discussing with people and looking at it. Really, people move for jobs. They move for higher income. They move for schools, better schools for their children. They move to, uh, to reduce their living costs, to get away from crime, move to a safer area. They move because of the climate. They move want to be a part of a smaller community or a larger community. They might want to be in, not live in a big state like Texas or not. 
Um, they move for amenities, for fun, the mountains, the beach, whatever else people like for entertainment. They move for economic freedom and other things. So, if we look at these things, I need a variable that I can use to try to uh, uh, capture that effect. For jobs, I'm going to use the unemployment rate. I move to a state with a low unemployment rate for a hope that I can get a job. I move to a state where uh, my wage and salary income will be larger. I move to a state for better schools as reflected in five schooling, con con five measures. Uh, we have five measures of where we can compare state by state in terms of the, how good their K through 12 schools are. I move to, for lower living costs, the problem with just living costs is that living costs includes taxes. So we need something which doesn't, such as the price of a home, um, home price index. I move to get away from crime. For that, you can use the violent crime rate. I move for, um, to a better climate, which could be a hotter. People, people say we're moving to the Sun Belt. Well, the variable for that is average temperature. People say I'm moving to be a part of, uh, I want to live in a hot climate or a cold climate. I like winter or I like summer. Well, I can come up with a variable for that. And also for the temper, I'm moving to get away from temperature variation, wide swings in the temperature, uh, such as Minnesota has. Amenities, how do you measure that? I like the beach, you like the mountains, I like the rangers, you like the theater, you know, we like whatever it is people want. Well, the best thing I know to, re to measure that is where do uh, international visitors go when they're traveling to American states but for pleasure? So we have data on that. We also have data on seven measures, eight measures of economic freedom. Here they are, personal taxes, corporate income taxes, sales taxes, government consumption of, not investment, but spending on consumption goods, government employment, government transfers from the rich to the poor uh, that Dr. Williams was talking about, private sector union membership and public sector union membership. And then maybe uh, population should be used as a control variable to see if states like Texas are gaining people only because they're big. Here's the answer. I've done significant, lots of work on this, and I can find six variables that are significant to people and their decision to move. Let me explain this. First uh, is, first let me talk about these coefficients and the t-statistics. The coefficient column here reflects the quantitative effect of a variable such as schooling on people's decision to migrate. So this is a number, the larger it is, the larger is the quantitative significance of that. This is the qualitative significance. If this number is above two, it, mean it is, means it is statistically significant at the 95% level, meaning you can be darn sure that this is an important thing to people. All these are statistically significant at the 99% level, which is far beyond the test that most uh, econometricians and scientists in, in, in economics use for uh, determining of a variable of significance. So these all matter, and they matter a lot to people, starting with personal income tax rates. Second uh, is the percentage of la labor force that's unionized. Eighth grade proficiency in math and reading is the only uh, education variable that I can figure out people are keying on when they decide to move their kids from one place to another and the family. Um, the single family home price, affordable housing matters to people, and uh, the temperature, the swings in temperature uh, matter to people. And also, the state population matters. Uh, it's very close to zero in terms of its quantitative size, but it does matter. In other words, people don't, it, they'd rather not move to a big state, but it's not a big deal. Now, this, these five variables alone explain 70% of all of the movement in people across America. What the equation looks like if you plug those numbers in there, that migration is, depends on taxes, the um, percent of the state labor force that's unionized, private sector, housing costs, schools, temperature in Fahrenheit, and the state population. So I can use this equation to then predict how much people would move, what, to what states they'd move, on the basis of what, how those states fare in terms of their taxes and so on. How does Texas fare? How does the nation fare comparing these variables across the 50 states? Uh, Massachusetts has a 12% personal income tax rate. California, a 10.6% uh, one. Texas, zero. Very important. Union membership in the private sector. 27.5% of the private sector labor force in New York is unionized. In Texas, it's just 6.2%. 
we are one of a minority of states that has a, where the citizens have a right to work. The ones here in blue are ones where citizens have a right to work. The ones in kind of a tan are forced unionism states. So if you go back and you look at that bar again, you'll see that most of the states uh, that are, have no right to work, the forced unionization states, have high union membership. And that's something that people don't want and companies don't want either. So they move their company and the people move looking for a job. Also, unionization rates, high unionization rates tend to be associated with high unemployment rates. Eighth grade proficiency in math, we could do better. We're at the top of the bottom half. Uh, Texas schools, of course, all schools need improving. What surprises me is the general low level of these numbers, 47%. Now, this is proficiency or above in math and reading on average across those two things. Only 47% of the students in Massachusetts are proficient or above in math and reading. Uh, we are right here at 31%, but that's not that much different from New York. And look where California is. It's better than California. So our schools, of course, need to be improved. Uh, single family home price, one third the cost in Texas of the cost in California. Uh, we fare in a good spot on this. We, California has a lot of laws which prohibit development. We don't. That, for them, that drives up prices. That's an attempt of the existing landowners and developers to keep prices high for themselves by shutting out, for, shutting out competition from others. We don't play that game as much at all. And so we benefit from that in terms of how low our prices are for homes. And then temperature variance, Minnesota, people don't like living in Minnesota's climate. Believe it or not, the 174 degree maximum temperature difference ever achieved in Minnesota is only 11th in the country. North Dakota exceeded it and so did South Dakota with 191 degree temperature variation from the high to the low. We don't have, our standard deviation is much lower than that. Uh, you think people are looking for a warm climate, but warmth tends to be associated on average with less variation on average. So look at Hawaii. I mean, they have a warm climate and the temperature is always the same. People just don't like that variation. So again, uh, we can, we can uh, see that most of this variation is explained by all these variables. Uh, here's what it looks like if you plot it. We have on this axis, on the vertical axis, the actual gain in people, and on this axis, what we would estimate that gain would be on the basis of those variables. And you see, estimated, we thought that on the basis of those var variables, you would expect California would lose about 130,000 people, but they lost actually much more than that, nearly 180,000. If the points lie in these upper right and bottom left quadrant, quadrants, that means they're conforming with the data, I can tell you I had to throw Louisiana out. It was way over here. That's the, you know, the hurricane. And this, so all these regression statistics are done throwing out uh, Louisiana. There are a few states where people are getting, they're getting more people than you would think. Uh, even Texas is one of those. Now, so you can explain most of the variation this way. And just two variables alone. Sorry. Just two variables alone. Let me skip over that. Um, we'll explain 44%. Taxes and labor market freedom explain 40, alone explain 44% of why Americans are moving across this country, the two most empower, powerful variables. So, um, welcome to California. <laughs> Leaving California. Welcome to Texas. Thank you. Let's, let me just stay on schedule here. What, I'm not making a phone call. I'm looking at my clock. Okay. <laughs> what time? What, um, we got about eight minutes or, or less for fewer for questions. Did I let you have time to think? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I'm glad you asked that. Last year, we published this report, which is available for you outside, The Ascension of DFW. We sent out 15,000 of these, and we're sending out 10,000 more. It's been very popular. And uh, much of the information and more, uh, a little bit, I'd say, of the information I have is in here in terms of comparison of tax rates, all the labor union membership and all that. 
And so this is really part one of a two-part series. The second one will be published this year. Uh, it's the material I just went over, and it will be available oh, fairly soon. So yes. Is the statistical methodology available in either of these publications? It will be at the time. Now, uh, if you'll, like I said, if you'll, or Michael said, if you give us your email address and so on, we'll make sure all of you get a copy of this report if you don't have one, and also uh, next year's. Yes, sir. The migration across Texas, what is the projected growth rate for the various metropolitan cities? I had this, some of this done here. That's a different issue. That's the, uh, now, here's um, one. I had done this at the, at the metropolitan, uh, the 100 top MSAs, metropolitan statistical areas. I've worked on that, and I've done it also at the uh, county level. And what I find, just looking at DFW, do you guys know that Dallas-Fort Worth is gaining a million people every six years? Net. And uh, so you might say, well, where are they moving? Where are people moving inside the Metroplex? The top counties are Collin County, Denton County, and Tarrant County. But to tell you the truth, uh, inside the Metroplex, the most people coming to those counties are coming from Dallas County. They're leaving Dallas and going north or northwest to these other counties. And you can see, now the number one foreign, uh, I'd say outside Dallas, outside DFW area from which people are coming, they're coming from Orange County, they're coming from um, Los Angeles County, they're moving out of California, they're moving up and they're moving to the northern part of DFW. So yes, I, I have, I'll have all this in that report as well. Uh, but this is exactly the wrong thing to do if you want to gain <laughs> citizens. And we know that people are sensitive to taxes. You can see Mayor Leopard here <laughs> oppose. I want to make a point. He did oppose this tax. It was five to four, I believe. But it happened nonetheless. Yes, sir. I can't find the data on state provision of health care for individuals. It's very difficult. If I can, I will put it in there. Um, I think that our next speaker, speaker, Dave Henderson, will address some of the health care issues. Um, so um, let me, um, he'll be up in just a minute. David might actually know that. Fred, yes. Um, I noticed that you have tax burdens there, but of course, Increasingly, as taxes and spending become sort of more visible and more scrutinized, right. we're going to move more and more to regulatory taxes. Right. Uh, is, have you tried to include a regulatory variable? I don't know that. Uh, a re, that, is, that is in the Fraser data. They have yeah. in the size of government. I don't know they if they decided or not, not but to. They have a measure there. Um, you know, Fraser and look, the data on economic freedom that I have, that most of the variables, seven of the eight variables, come from the Fraser Institute in Canada, which has, I think, the most generally wide, widely recognized and um, best data on economic freedom across not just the world, but across the states. Well, Fraser decided, if you read their book very carefully, not to have separate variables for regulation or even a separate variable for public sector unions. They felt like that was uh, incorporated in the um, size of government variable. Um, and so I kind of agree with him on that. Um, and if, if, you, if you have the data for it, though, I can, I can try it and see how, how much it matters. Certainly, it does matter to businesses to be in an environment where they can produce without so much regulation. Maybe Fred, you, you have it. Fred will be up later, too. Fred Smith from the uh, Competitive Enterprise Institute. Yes, ma'am. Are you worried that the people that are coming here from California, Texas, Michigan, without the screwed-up background? <laughs> Should I repeat that question? <laughs> I think, am I worried that the people coming here from California with all their screwed up backgrounds, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Um, no, um, because I think they're like immigrants from the rest of the world. They, they, they're coming here from, for, for the, wanting something that they don't find and, and, they're, and they're bringing their families and if they're willing to endure that, then they're probably uh, going to behave much like my wife who's from Ecuador and she's... Uh, went from poverty to wealth, but with self-attained 
accomplishment. So determination. Yes, sir. Yes. What are the prospects of that change during the next decade with all the immigration? Texas is, I noticed that Texas is one of the states that does not have a state income tax. What are the prospects of that changing over the next few years with all the things that are happening in state legislature? That's the question. The answer is it's up to you and me. Who, um, my job is to educate people as to how important this is, this variable is, to states uh, like Texas gaining people. Obviously, it's very important. It's one of, one of the, if not, is one of the most important variables. And so we just have to make sure that this, this thing, I think it's our state identity. No taxes, no income. It's why I moved here, fr quite frankly, uh, to Texas 25 years ago. It's one of the two main areas. It wasn't for the beach. It wasn't for the mountains. <laughs> what tends to happen in the states that have beaches and mountains and a lot of other things is the government learns that they can use that as a uh, wedge for extracting rent from people. Oh, you like the beaches and the mountains? I bet I could tax you a little bit and you'd still stay here. And they keep on raising taxes and they get used to raising taxes and they go past that threshold point. People say, no thanks, no more. And spe especially if you have a good airport. I like to hike and I like to travel. Hey, I can, get, I can fall asleep here, wake up in Tokyo, you know, on a plane and nonstop. That's important that we can earn our income here and then, you know, uh, take whatever else we want for our pleasure elsewhere. 